Hi everyone, in this tutorial you're going to learn how to take a 2D photo and turn it into a 3D head in iClone 5. First what you're going to need is a front facing photo, just like the ones you take for the school yearbook. Except this time don't show your beautiful braces. So the first thing you want to do is go up to the head tab and then select load image. Once you find your image, just select it and press OK. It doesn't have to be a completely clean image without a background, just so long as the face is facing relatively towards the front and your mouth is closed. iClone will do the rest. So now I have my image here. In the first step, I can auto adjust the color, crop the image, etc. But I'm fine with my image the way it is, so I'll just go on to the next step. Here you're simply going to set the facial boundaries for your character. You can also select the male or female profile for a more suitable template. Try to keep the lines along the outer edge of the skull, but the most important thing is to look for a decent result in the left preview window. This step is for facial angle and orientation. If your face is tilted to the side or slightly upwards, you want to adjust this a bit. My character is pretty spot on though, so I'll just move to the next step. This is the step that requires the most effort. Here you'll want to set the boundary markers for your head and all of your facial features. It's always a good idea to zoom the preview pic on the left to get a better view. Let's start by zooming in on his right eye by using the Select Zoom tool. You'll see a number of white markers around the eye, which I want to adjust slightly here. Also, remember to turn the mirror option off when you're adjusting the eyes, because the chances are they're far from exactly the same dimensions on both sides. Remember that the blue line connecting these markers is essentially where your character's eyelash is going to go. Therefore, you'll want to put it along the rim of the eyelids. I'll finish adjusting his left eye here, and then move on to the nose. The nose markers form sort of a diamond shape. Essentially, you want the top marker to be at the peak of the nose, while the bottom marker should be at the top of the upper lip. For the markers on the side, you'll want to put them beside either nostril. It's often better to use the preview image as a guide as opposed to your markers, as that really represents the result that will actually go out. You can see the outlines of the nose change as I move around the markers. The lips are also super important. When I'm adjusting the lips, it's a good idea to make sure that there is a steady line that exists where the lips part in the middle. Also, make sure that the lip markers outline the entirety of the lip area of your character. Otherwise, his lips may become too thin. When you're finished with the small facial details, you can move on to refine the outer edges of the head. Now if you want, you can also use a profile image of a face to refine the ear area on the side of the head. What I'm going to do is click on Edit Side at the top of the panel. I'll just go up to Open Image and then select my character's facial profile image. Once that's loaded, you can see my character's side view change a bit as I move the facial outline upwards. It's good to use your character's original ear if they have one, as the image will possibly be an improvement over the default iClone ear. Don't worry if the facial outline fits completely. Once that's satisfactory, just move on to the next step, which is again setting the markers. Remember, you can always adjust fine facial features later. The side image allows you to get more all-around facial detail, particularly on the side and rear of the head. You can adjust the two vertical indicator lines here to get the best blending result for each image. The two vertical lines represent the blending area between the facial image and the default iClone head. You'll likely want to keep this area between the edge of the eye and the beginning of the ear. If you stretch it too far in either way, you can get some distorted results. Again though, every character is unique, so some may be different as well. The main thing you should be concerned about with the side image is your character's ear. Ok, so once you're done that, just press OK. Remember that this step is irreversible, so make sure you know what you're doing. After that, it will give you the option to save the character's head to your custom head directory. You can do so, and when you finish, your character with a new head will appear. The only thing is, he looks a little dead in the eyes, so let's give him some default iClone ones. 
When the eyes are first replaced, you'll notice that the whites are way too white and a little unnatural. I can adjust that by going to the Modify panel on the right, selecting the White's radio button, and then adjusting the brightness from there. If you select the iris, you can also adjust the hue and brightness of those as well. Now for the hair, once you fit your face, you'll likely find that Chuck's default hair won't fit perfectly on your new head. If you want to delete the hair altogether, you can go to the hair section of the avatar tab and then simply press delete. If you want to change the light on your character's face, you can simply hold down the forward slash key and use the rotation gizmo to change the directional light. Now, if I want to make modifications to the texture of my character's face, I need to go up to the texture editor in the head tab. Here you'll find a number of different options in this panel, including all of your facial maps such as diffuse, opacity, etc. You can make your face invisible if you'd like by bringing down the opacity to zero, or give him some kind of alien facial texture by using the bump map. I'm going to do a little texture editing using Photoshop first. To do that, I'll just select the launch button, which will launch my facial map in Photoshop. What I'm going to do first is use the simple smudge tool and smudge the darkness under my character's eyes a bit so he looks tired. Now I'm back in iClone and what I want to do is press update to see the updated image. Pay attention to the preview window and you'll see the character's eyes with a bit of a more tiresome look. I'm back in Photoshop here, and just for fun, I'm going to give my character a black eye. First, I can use the saturation sponge and dab it around my eye to give the area a bit of a reddish look, as if it's just been hit. Next, I need to add on a little bruising, so first I need to select a nice bruising color. I'm going to use the simple brush tool Make sure I have the right brush size. Then, I can just paint around the edges of my eye to make my shiner look a bit more attention grabbing. Okay, so now it looks about right. So what I'm going to do is update it once again in the iClone Texture Editor. And there you have it. This guy now has a black eye. Just press OK in the texture editor to return to your regular updated character. Now, if you want, you can also do some post-editing to your character's face. Just for fun, we can apply some animation to him as well. You'll notice here that there are a number of different animation templates for different emotions. If you want to preview them, simply press space and move your mouse around. When you're ready to record, just press the record button and then press space. Then move your mouse around according to the movements you want your character to make. So now you can see that my character looks like a pretty bitter guy. Maybe because he just got punched in the face? Who knows? If I go to the face section of the head tab, I can adjust any single facial feature by using the sliders in the modify panel like so. I can also use any one of these preset facial templates and adjust the weight to give my character a brand new kind of look like I'm doing here with these two profiles. To go into even more specific detail, you can go into the Details panel and click and drag individual markers to adjust different sections of your character's face. You can
can also use the mirror option to adjust both sides at once. That way we can make this guy look really mean. If I want to save my character, I just need to go into the custom tab of the head section and use the little plus button at the bottom there, then enter in my name and press OK. Now I have a brand new head that I can import on to any other character. Check out our other character customization tutorials for more.